Now we will look at now we will look at how to find those paths. Okay. So uh, this is uh, there is a story about this which is quite cute. So um, what well, we will visit one of the classicals of finding the shortest path. So it was said that in 19th 56, when Dijkstra, the guy who conceived this algorithm, uh, when he was shopping with his fiancée and think, he was actually thinking about the shortest way to travel from Rot Rotterdam to uh, Groningen, okay? So that was kind of, you know, I, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, it's like something inspirational, like should you, should you be thinking about science when you're doing shopping? Well, that's a one way of optimizing your time. But I like how he got inspired, like maybe he needed to travel with like his whatever reason, but that was kind of an interesting anecdote people say about Dijkstra and like Dijkstra, they actually, it's I think the way, the right way of like pronouncing is Dijkstra. So uh, yeah, so after that, interestingly, I was expecting that he would publish it right away. He got the idea, he conceived the whole algorithm, uh, like when he was like walking in the streets, like whatever he's doing. That was very uh, impressive to me, but then he published his algorithm uh, later on. So it was in 1959, so it wasn't like on the same year, it took some time. And he wrote his algorithm in a two-page note, okay? So it's like a short algorithm. And the paper is in the top 1% of most cited papers ever published across all fields of sciences. So this is guys, this is why guys you need to know this algorithm. So even if it's old and classical and simple, people still use it. And there are many, many variations of uh, Dijkstra algorithm, which means people build on his work, they try to optimize it, they derive many other ideas. I would say uh, the Dijkstra of our time is maybe, I'm not judging, but uh, maybe Goodfellow with GANS, Generative Adversarial Network. So like this basically kicked out off like four years ago and then now like, no, in 2014 and then now it's exploding and like everyone is taking that model, creating like variations of that model in like unprecedented ways. But um, yeah, so uh, great ideas are, uh, Sometimes you don't know which one would be great, but um, this is something to also to study and contemplate on, right? Okay, so uh, is it the first algorithm? Now this is important. So it's the most cited, it's a great idea. We will learn about it today. Uh, you guys need to really understand how it works. And if you understand the concept is so easy, it's not difficult. But is it the first algorithm to compute shortest path lengths between two nodes in a graph? Was it the first? Why? Uh, we only know about this one generally. Uh, it's very famous. May, famous. So may, are there any other algorithms that were designed or devised before uh, Dijkstra's algorithm? Yes, the answer is yes. So there was an algorithm uh, uh, designed or developed in the early 1950s and it's called like the matrix method, okay, or matrix methods. And this was designed by uh, Schimbel and Luce, okay, for only binary graphs. So the good thing about Dijkstra, we will see it works on weighted graphs, directed and undirected graphs. It's very generic, very powerful. But there is there's another algorithm. So let's let's look at this algorithm because we will revisit this concept uh, in the next lecture. So what is what is this about? So the matrix method says here. Let's look. Given a binary adjacency matrix A of a graph. Then A to the power of K characterizes all walks in a network that traverse exactly K edges. Okay, this is very uh, interesting. So, um, and in this in this case, like we look at graph theory from a linear algebra perspective, which is really cool. So, this is the definition that we saw before for an adjacency matrix of a graph, of binary uh, graph. So here we have an n by n graph, which means uh, the graph has n nodes. So for uh, self connections, we have zero. Aij is connected uh, is equal to one if there is an edge. Otherwise, this is zero. So this is known. Now let's look at this case. Okay. So we have here. Uh, our adjacency matrix, this is the corresponding graph of the matrix, okay? So we have nodes from uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? And the number of walks, you'll see now, we can verify this, 
uh, the number of walks of length two between two notes. Uh, for example, uh, here, if we take any pair of notes, V, I, and V, J, is a to the power of two of I, O, J. So we need to compute the uh, power two matrix um, uh, A, okay? And then uh, read the element I, J, whatever, and take that value. That's actually the number of walks of length, what, two, between these two nodes, I and J, and that's what it means. Now let's verify this. For example, I would like you guys to look at this uh, matrix, okay? So this is the matrix that will give us the, uh, the, the walks of length two between uh, two nodes in this graph. So for example, if I take V2 and V3, so this is, you know, V2 and V3, or I take um, V2 and again V2, okay? So you will see we have different numbers. Can you guys see the walks? Okay, so let's read it together. So to go from V2 to V3, V2, so this is 2, to V3, we read it. So there is only one walk of length 2. So to go from V2 to V3, there is only one walk of length 2. Okay? That's the walk. Okay. Now, there is no other walks of length 2. You guys can uh, double check. So now for... This, you know, for V2, so we want to go from V2 and come back to V2. So this is from 2 to 2, so we have 3, okay? Now, why we have number 3? What does it mean? It means we have 3 walks, okay? So 3 walks, I can go, and I need to go back, so this is number 1, this is number 2, and this is number three. And what do you guys know this? That actually this is the degree of the node, okay? So this has to do a lot of de uh, with degrees, but so there is a theorem about this and you guys can play with it, okay? Can you, you can do uh, create different small graphs and try to compute the power of the matrices and extract those walks manually. This is a good um, exercise. So what does the theorem state? This is, uh, it says that the number of walks of length k, so this is, you know, um, a short walk, basically. Uh, in this case, we want to find, to go from, you know, like one node to another node. Joining any two nodes, vi and vj, in a binary graph is given by uh, the ij entry of the matrix a to the power of k. And this is, you know, basically, this is the number of walks of length k. And this is how we get it, okay? Now, how do we prove this? It's very easily provable. Uh, you guys can do this at home. It's, uh, if you know induction, you should have seen this in uh, analysis of algorithms, right? So uh, by induction, you uh, hypothesize, hypothesize this, you assume it's true for k and prove it for k plus 1. So you can do it just by multiplication and uh, derive it, okay? So this is provable by induction. So this algorithm, it allows you to find walks of particular lengths. It's called the matrix methods. It's simple. But it operates uh, on, on, on binary graphs. Now, if you have weighted or directed, uh, how to generalize, then we have uh, Dijkstra. So, here, let me explain how the key ideas, the key rules in the algorithm, and then, and then we're going to have two demos. And if you understand these two demos, you'll get everything about the algorithm. So, let's go step by step. So, first, Dijkstra uh, algorithm is iterative. Okay, so at each iteration, we update uh, the, the key rules, like we need to update the path lengths from a user-defined initial node. So we define an initial node, Chokyesha, and then we try to get to all other nodes in a graph. Uh, and as we visit these nodes, we need to update their path lengths. So each node i is assigned a single value L, uh, 0i, zero so zero, if we assume that zero, 0 basically is the initial node, that represents its path length from the initial node. So for each node i, so if this is um, my node i, okay, I will put the value 6. It means to reach this node from uh, the first node 0, I need, I need to traverse the shortest path that I traverse, or the 
up to this point is 6, okay, to that uh, current point. So I'll explain more later on. So we aim, basically, we aim to iteratively decrease the path length values assigned to each node. So the goal of Dijkstra algorithm is to look at those and then, like, you know, basically these values, if there is a shorter path, we uh, want to remove this and put, you know, a smaller value. So the idea is to update the values inside the nodes. Now, the initial node is assigned a path length of zero. So this is the initialization. So the initial node has a zero path, while all other nodes are assigned infinity, which means they're far away. They don't, they don't have any distances for now. We, we didn't compute any of their distances. So we start by visiting the neighbors. So the key rule here is to visit, start from the initial node, visit the neighbors, okay? So once we visit the neighbors of the initial node, uh, then we keep on applying these rules progressively until we have visited all nodes in the graph and that's when the algorithm stops, okay? So here are the key steps. So uh, this is, you know, the key steps of the algorithm. So we will look at these key steps and apply them to uh, this graph together step by step, okay? So the first thing is we need to initialize the path length in each node. So this is the initialization. So the first node here, this is our starting node, node A, okay? We will go from node A to all other nodes, visit B, C, D, and E, okay? So to visit these nodes, we do the initialization. So we have zero for the starting initial node and infinity for all other nodes, okay? So next, from the starting node, we visit the node with the smallest known distance. So we always need to pick from where we are the node uh, that has the smallest known distance, which means we have already computed it. So here, uh, we need to keep, create a list to keep track of the visited nodes, and we can also create a list to keep track of the unvisited uh, nodes, okay? So two lists. And once we've checked, we've moved to the smallest cost node, so we made our choice, we moved to the smallest cost node, for example here D, okay? So then what we do, we need to check each of its neighbors. So this node is active now, like we, we look at, we explore its neighbors, and we calculate the cost for the neighboring nodes of this node. So we look at its neighbors, ca calculate the cost by summing the cost of the edges leading from the start. So we look so I'll explain this. So basically we update what's, you know, the values inside these nodes, the neighboring ones, okay? And if the distance to a node we are checking is less than a known distance, so let's say before, as I explained, we found 6, but then after we updated we find 5, then we need to update that. So if the distance we are checking is less than a known distance, we update the shortest distance for that node or vertex. So Let's look at how this uh, operates, and you guys will understand by the animation and the demo. It will be much easier, okay? So, this is our graph, and let me find a good... I think this is okay. Okay, so we start from node A. This is our starting node. And here we need to keep track of the visited nodes and keep track of the list of the unvisited nodes, okay? So for node A, we visit its neighbors, so we check its neighbors, this is the checking step. So we have two neighbors here, B and D, okay? I check these two neighbors and I should put the, the distance, I, once I check them, what I put, I calculate, okay, once I check, I calculate the distance uh, from the source initial node. So the distance here is 6, so I can put 6. So when I put on top, it means this is the value that goes inside the node, okay, guys? And for this one, it's what? It's 1. Now I need to update my table. I look, this is an important, so this is very important. The table is very important. So I look at uh, B and D. So B and D, they have infinity, so these are uh, not large values, so I can replace them with the smaller values that I found. So 6 and the previous node, I found 6 from A, okay? So this is the previous node that led me to the value 6, okay? Then for D, I have 1 and also A. Now, the key rule here is the next step. So the next step, we select, uh, we have visited all the neighbors of A, okay? So A, we can put it here, so it's visited because... Uh, now we checked its neighbors, updated their values, so we consider it as visited, okay, because we checked it, 
you know, uh, we put the values of uh, the shortest length of, the, of its neighbor, so it's visited, and we pop it out from here, okay? Next, which node to choose? This is the key question. Now, I have two options, these two neighbors. Which one to choose, D or B? So the rule is I choose the node, okay, that I look at the table, and I choose the node, so this is, you know, visited, so I will kind of, you know, cross it like this, okay, or maybe just put a star, okay, for now. And I will choose the node with the, with the smallest value, okay, the, small, the shortest length. So what is the node, that, well, in this table, what is the node with the shortest length, guys? It's D, okay, so this is my current node that um, I will, I'm selecting, so I select D. And then next, what I do, I need to visit uh, it's, uh, so this one has been like basically, uh, tagged, so I have visited it. So I'll just cross it like that. Now I need to visit, uh, the unvisited neighbors of D, which are unvisited neighbors B and E, okay? So B and E, what do we have here? We have to go from D has one, okay? So this is the value plus two. Then what do you know this? If you do one, so this is the value that D is taking, okay? Remember, this value is inside D. And then I walk two more steps here, okay? And the path length to get to B is now equal to what? Three, okay? From D. So I do plus. This is the adding rule. And then since three is smaller than six, okay? So remember, I, have, I need to visit these two. But since three is smaller than six, so I replace it. So I do this. 3, and it's actually coming from which node? The previous node, D. Okay? Now, the next one, I need to look at E. So E has infinity here. So what is the value here? It's 1 plus 1. So I have a 2. So I can replace it with 2. So I put 2 here, and it's coming from node D. Okay, now, D, I have visited all its neighbors and updated their values, checked at least their values, okay? So D is now visited. So D is visited, okay? So I pop it up. And then I go to the next. How do I choose the next? What is the rule, guys? The rule is I need to basically look at the smallest value. So in this table, check my table, shortest distance from A. What is the shortest distance? It's 2. Okay, so I select two. This is my uh, current node. And then I need to visit its unvisited neighbors. So the unvisited neighbors are B and C. Okay, we got it. Now I look at the values. Here I have two plus two. If I do two plus two, so if I go from, you know, like I, I take the value inside my current node two and add the, this, the weight of this edge, what is the value that will be inside B? It will be equal to 4, but 4 is larger, so I should not replace it, okay? I keep my previous value. Now, I look at C. C, what does it have? It's infinity, right? So any value, I can put it there, so I can replace it. So it's 2 plus 5, so I put 7 here, okay? So it means that C has 7, and it's coming from which node? The previous node, it's from E, okay? Now, I have visited all the uh, neighbors of node E, so E is visited, and then actually what do I have next? I can select node, uh, so let me mark it so as visited, so we don't get, so E is, A, D, E is visited, so we have two nodes, three or seven, okay, so these are uh, the ones that are remaining unvisited. We agree on that, so we select three, that's small. This is my active node now. Okay, and I want to visit the unvisited um, node. So the unvisited node that's uh, of this, so I visited A, I visited D, I visited E, so the only remaining one is C, okay? So then what I do, I look at three, so the three is the value inside my, my, my B, uh, node, okay, 3 plus 5 is 8, it's not smaller than 7, so I do not make any changes, okay, so now I know this what, that I have checked all the neighbors of B starting from B, so B is what visited, okay, now 
Next is that I pop it out. The next one is so simple. That's it. I have arrived. So I do this. See? And this is Dijkstra's algorithm. Okay, step by step. We're going to do it again in a bit. I'll give you some time to run it on an example. Okay? So the table is very important. This table. Now, if I want to find the shortest path, let's say from uh, to go from C. So if I go... Uh, to go from C, I need to use this table. I trace back. So, C. And then I need to go back to E. And then from E, I go to D. And then from D, I find my A. So, the shortest path is A, D, E, C. So, if I do it this way, A, D, E, C. Okay? That's how you find the shortest path. So this is very cool because you can find the shortest path between any pair uh, of, of nodes in, in the graph. And uh, yeah, so this is one of the strengths of uh, Dijkstra algorithm. So this is the uh, solution as you guys can see it here. And I would like you to take a few minutes and try to solve this. Okay? So, yeah, I'll give you five minutes or like, you know, a few minutes and try to run the algorithm and see whether you get the right result. So remember, a node is marked as visited when all its neighbors have been checked, okay? Not visited, just checked. It means like you updated their values at least once, okay? You visited them from that node, okay? From that node. And then always visit the unvisited node with the smallest distance. Keep track of the table. And it will be easy. So I will start it with you a little bit, and then um, and then you guys can keep it on. So if I do, so this is node A. Okay.
Okay, two more minutes. Okay, guys, so have you followed up to this point, okay? Did you follow what my changes? Everyone agrees? Okay, so now I look at my table and I need to uh, the um, select or visit the node that has the smallest or the shortest distance. So it will be B because it's unvisited. Remember, I can never revisit and you know like a visited node once it's visits vi once it is visited i never go back again okay so it's five so now b becomes active and i visit its unvisited neighbors so its unvisited neighbors are e and i update the value i look at the value so five plus one it's six actually six is smaller than eleven so it's good so i do this six and it's coming from okay and I visit its um, other neighbor D and actually D has uh, not been visited before ever so checked it has not been checked so here we put uh, update its value so 5 plus 1 it's 6 and it's coming from B now we notice that B I have visited all of its uh, checked all of its neighbors so now I add it to the visited list okay and pop it out, okay, and then here B is visited, okay. So what is the next node? So I need to select uh, the next <coughs> node to visit. I have two choices, so I have like either D or E. I can choose uh, one of them because they have exactly the same weight. So let's say I go with D, so I select node D, this is my active node. I check its unvisited neighbors, so remember, it's better to keep the visited ones tagged. Okay, visit it, visit it, visit it, okay. So the unvisited neighbors are E and F. So for E, 6 plus 1, it's 7, it's not good, so I do not update. I do not change the value inside E, which is 6, the value inside E is 6. Okay, you guys can see from the table. And then I check its other neighbor, neighbor F. So F here uh, takes the value 6 plus 20. So 26 starting from node A. So I update it. So it's 26. And it's coming from node D. Okay, so now you guys know this. I have visited all, checked all these nodes. So D is visited. I mark it as visited. And then I uh, remove it from the list. Okay, and I select the next node. So what is the next uh, node to visit? It's E because this is the smallest value in the remaining uh, unvisited um, uh, nodes. So I activate E and visit its unvisited, basically visit its um, uh, neighbor that, that's unvisited, that's not in the um, visited list, so F, okay. 
So if I take 6 plus 1, what do you guys know this? 6 plus 1 is 7. It's smaller than 26. So I can update the value. So that's 7. I put 7. And then it's coming from which node? It's node E. And then I have visited all, uh, checked all the neighbors of E. So it's like I pop it out. And the last node is actually F. And that's it. So I add it to my list. This is the last step. And we're done, okay? We agree on this, step by step. And here you guys can see that uh, this is, you know, like uh, the solution following exactly the same steps. And now, what is the shortest path to go from node A to node F, and what is, what is its length, okay? So we want to go from A to F, so from F, I need to go to E, so that's 1. And from E, I need to go trace it back to B, okay? And from B, I need to trace it back or go back to A. So this is the shortest path, and the length is equal to 7, okay? We all agree on this. Okay, cool. Great, so I guess, I guess guys with these two demos, you can also rewatch the videos of uh, the video, you, you will be able to run it automatically, it's not that difficult. Uh, so now, here's the thing, so uh, Dijkstra algorithm is really good, it can handle weighted directed graphs, but not neg negatively weighted edges. So if you have negative edges is a problem, why is that? So I would like you to think about it, okay? Try to run it on a small example. And how can we solve this? Uh, this is part, it will be part of your homework. So this is one of the classicals too. Uh, the bellman ford algorithm, which can work on uh, basically on graphs without cycles, okay? But they can have negative edges, but they should not have si negative cycles, okay? That's the condition for the bellman ford So you can... Uh, uh, you will, you know, uh, introduce the algorithm, explain how it works, run it on a small data that I'll give you, and, you know, code it up from scratch. So I know that this algorithm exists in Python, it's like, you know, in all languages, but I highly recommend, for this homework, you guys should try to code it up by yourselves, okay, uh, using whatever language.